Good morning, good morning, and we bless the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said unto me in the wide translation, let's go to church. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And I know that even, even now, even now, it's kind of difficult, but please understand that even though some of you may not be at church, you can still be in church. Amen. And it's more so an attitude of worship and reverence unto God. God has been good to us. He's brought us from a mighty long way, and so we bless and praise the name of God uh, for this opportunity. I'm going to ask that you would stand, those of you who are watching online, and would you also stand our reverence to the word of God as we uh, prepare to read scripture, Isaiah chapter number 40, Isaiah chapter number 40. Would you all stand, please? Would all of you stand, please? Isaiah chapter 40, starting at verse number 28. The word of God says, Has thou not known? Mm -hmm. Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Thus reads the word of God. May God bless his word. Let's pray God in Jesus' name. name. We have to say thank Thank you because in spite of all, you've still been good. In spite of all, you've still kept us. In spite of all, you've still protected us. In spite of all, you still guarded us. In spite of all, Lord, you've had your angels to be guards around us. And God, we want to say thank you now. Thank you, God, for letting us get up today and find our way to the house of prayer, find our way around a computer or a TV to, to, to worship and fellowship and bless your holy name. God, we thank you now that even though some of us are not in the church, God, uh, we're, we're not at the church house, Lord, but we can still be in worship. And so, God, we want to say thank you now. Thank you most of all for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for his suffering, his death on the cross. Thank you that he paid a debt he didn't know we owed a debt we could not pay. Thank you, God, for the finished work of Calvary. Thank you for the blood that was shed on Golgotha's bloody hill. Thank you that he died, was buried, and thank you that he's alive and alive forevermore. Thank you that he got up from the grave. Thank you that we serve and love a risen Savior. Thank you, God. And so we pray now that even now, God, that you would bless this time of worship, bless this time of praise, bless this time of fellowship, bless this time of your word. God, we're praying that you would touch the songs that we'll be singing. Pray that you would bless the word, touch the hearts and the minds and the ears of those who receive. Be blessed by the study of your word. Please touch now in Jesus' name. And then, God, someone may need to be saved. We don't know. Someone may need to be healed. We don't know. Someone may need to be delivered. We don't know. But we know that you know, and we know that you have all power in heaven and earth in your hand. And so, God, we pray that you would move on today. God, we pray that you would heal on today. God, we pray that you would save on today. God, we pray that you would lift up a bowed down head on today. God, we pray that you would touch now and have your way, God. Someone needs you, Heavenly Father. Someone needs you, Heavenly Father. Someone needs you, Heavenly Father. Well, I need you, Heavenly Father, and I know I can't make it without you. And so, God, we pray that you would have your way. God, we're praying for those who are sick and shut in, those who are not came here, not here just because of the COVID, because some of them have just been sick for a long time, God. But we thank you for their perseverance and continued blessings and strength upon them, God. Then we're praying for those who are dealing with bereavement, those who are dealing with sickness. God, we know that you're able to touch and lift up a bow down here. So, God, we pray that you would have your way. We thank you now. We bless you now. We holler your name now. God, you're holy. God, you're almighty. God, you are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. God, you are the God of Israel. You are the God of the armies. God, you are the Lord of the hosts. God, we thank you now. God, we worship you now. God, we bless your name now. God, we hallow your name now. We ask that you would touch now. In the name of Jesus, be glorified. 
and we'll give your name glory, honor, and praise. And we'll give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Somebody said amen. amen. Come on, give God a big hand of praise right now.
Because I got here, don't mean y'all have to sit down. Yeah. He's worthy forever. He's worthy. The next minute is a part of the He's forever. Worthy. The next minute is a part of forever. Yeah. And He is worthy forever. I said, He's worthy forever. Yeah. He's worthy forever. Yeah. And even when we didn't realize it, He's still worthy forever. Yeah. I'm glad that I found out about it, that I, He's worthy forever. And so now I know he's worthy forever. And as good as he's been for me and been to me, he's worthy forever. He's worthy for because he's God forever. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands in this place and tell God thank you. Come on, don't be scared. Tell him thank you. He's worthy forever. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. God, we honor you. God, we adore you. God, we extol you. God, we esteem you high. God, we bless your name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. First of all, God, you didn't have to be so good. And then you didn't have to be specific and be so good to me. But God, you've been so good to us, and we want to thank you, God. We honor you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, God. You're worthy, God. Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. We bless your name. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. 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 We hallow your name, God. We hallow your name, God. Yes, Lord. We hallow your name, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. We hallow your name, God. We lift you up, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name. God, you're worthy. Yeah. God, you're worthy. God, you're worthy.
my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship, here's my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship. Say you, Lord, you, Lord, you are worthy. Say no one. And no one can worship you for me. All the, all the things you've done for me. And no one. And no one can worship you. Here's my worship, here's my worship, all of my worship, you sing my worship, all of my, all of my worship, here's my worship, here's my worship, all of my, all of my worship, you sing my, you sing my worship.
my worship. Sing it out. All of my worship. Receive. Receive my worship. All of my. All of my worship. Here is my worship. Here is my worship. All of my. All of my worship. We break open the alabaster box. Say, and I will not be silent.
close enough to be silent. It's mighty quiet in here right now. Yeah. I think that if you listen to what I would do in the kind of the words, or by listening to the words, think about how God has been in your life personally. And when you begin to think about how personally it'll take you to a point where it's like I not only will I I don't want to be silent but I refuse to be silent he's been that, he's, he's been that good to us he's been that good to us remember when we was out there ducking and dodging when that, whatever we were ducking and dodging and God made sure that that which we were ducking and dodging didn't take us over that's the stuff that causes us not to be silent. And even when life happens and things just happen as they always will, and uh, but God continues to protect us and to love us and to cover us and to hover over us and to watch over us and to guide us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Thank God, even when the bad stuff didn't happen, that was just, that wasn't the close of the book. That was just the close of a chapter. God was up to something else new. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 That's why we ought not be silent. Somebody ought to, you ought to be looking at your phone, screaming right now. You know how good God has been. Somebody be in your living room with your hands up, just crying to the Lord because he's been so good. Somebody in here, and you know God has been good to you. Even when you wasn't being good to yourself, he was still being good to you. And that's why you ought to just make the declaration that I refuse to be silent. Be like that woman, that, that, that woman who was crying out to the Lord, and they was like, "Be quiet, be quiet." The more they said, "Be quiet," the louder they got. I mean, sometimes you gotta get that serious with God. God, I need you now. God, they don't know what I'm going through. They don't know the pain that I'm dealing with. They don't know the issues that I'm suffering with. So God, forget them. I need you now.
respectful, but there were those who were saying that, you know, churches with all that shouting and, and singing needs to cease. They don't understand. What did you say, Brother Carl? They don't understand what we've been through and how God has blessed us. And, and sometimes we can't help but help. sing. And then when we think about the goodness of the Lord and all that yeah. he's done for us, we can't help but shout. Yes, we can't help but get emotional. Because he's been so good to us. Yeah. So good to us. So good. So good to us. Hallelujah. That, 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 that. There's a passage of scripture where both the enemy had taken the people of God captive. And they said, sing, man, sing. Y'all been singing, sing. They said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Well, when you know what you know, when you've been Come through on. what you've been through, and Come when on. you know who you connected to, you can sing the Lord's song anywhere, anytime. Listen, listen, see if you can do this without clapping. Tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. Think about it. It's kind of hard for me to, to stop clapping. It's hard, but God, I exalt your name. God, I exalt. With the fruit of my lips, God, I bless your name. God, you good. Bless your name. Hallelujah to your name. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, God. Yeah, for that one too. Thank you, Lord. God. Yes, for taking me through that. Thank you. Glory to God. Yes, God. yes, for putting up with me there. Glory thank you. Lord, forgive, yes. for giving me for that, Lord. Thank you. Lord, thank you for protecting me, Lord. Thank you, God. Yes, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. says certain things, but oh, when I get into the presence of the Lord, it's hard for me to, to, to claim and reclaim the protocols and all of that. I just have to kind of stop and say, God, I want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. On um, last Sunday, They were just moving to another seat, and they came and united um, with Mount Calvary um, officially. But, uh, yeah. I claimed him as part of the family. It was a couple of years ago, I believe, when they had went to uh, another. 
place. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to leave it in your hands. And even when we were, you know, kind of sheltered in place, they were still coming. And uh, he finally made official what I believe God had already planned. And um, um, so I asked him, I was like, Lord, is it okay? And the Lord was like, yeah, I asked him to preach on, on today. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Yeah. Wait, I can say this. One of the sons of Mount Calvary. Uh-huh. Reverend Christopher Comier, let's say amen as he comes. Church say amen. The church say praise the Lord. I'm going to try that one more time. The church say amen. The church say praise the Lord. My um, friend and pastor in L.A. when we lived in L.A. used to get on my case for saying I won't be before you long. But I'm going to say it anyways in these times. I I won't be before you long. We'll see what thus saith the Lord. God be old, thy great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land, God, Jehovah, great Jehovah, Hold me with your powerful hand. I am weak, but thou mighty. Here's my favorite part, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Shall we pray? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet again another day. 
another day to walk through this journey that we call life, Lord. We thank you that we know that somebody lied down last night but didn't get up this morning, but you have saw fit to wake us up with your finger of love, and for this we say thank you. We thank you for guiding us, thy great Jehovah, through this strange and barren land. But, Lord, you still walk, uh, water our footsteps. You still are guiding us day by day. And, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask right now that if you would ask that a message would be said, that someone would ask that question, what must I do to be saved? And for those of us that have already made that commitment, Lord, allow us to hear something, including myself, that allow us to go on just a little while longer. We thank you, Lord, but most of all, we thank you for Jesus that died that Friday, but early Sunday morning, got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. These and other blessings we ask in his name and for his sake. Amen. And thank you, God. First, give an honor to God from whom all blessings flow. To Dr. Wyatt for sharing this opportunity today. To fellow preachers, my wife. And all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is an honor again to be here to do what thus saith the Lord. If you will, will you turn with me to the book of First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. Chronicles, First Chronicles 12 and 32. I'm reading from the NIV and we're only going to stop with that one. First Chronicles 12 and 32. And it reads thus following. Men of Issachar, who understood the times and knew what Israel should do, 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. I'm only going to stay right there. From this, I want to use as a subject, a church of the times. A church of the times. You may be seated. Through the years, we've noticed many companies that have refused to stay with the times and assumed that since they were once successful, then they would always be, in spite of the changes and new ways of doing business or new trends that made life easier, cheaper or something more enjoyable. Yeah. It was an enjoyable time as a child being able to go on a Friday or Saturday night to Blockbuster Video or even the local video rental store in my neighborhood that gave you a free bag of freshly popped popcorn to take home with your movie rental. Yet according to an article I read sometime back in Forbes, the executives at Blockbuster had an opportunity to purchase a then new company that people liked to rent DVDs by mail called Netflix. They thought that it was a joke and would never take on and they passed on the deal. Now there was only one blockbuster video left in the world down from a little over 9,000 in the mid 2000s, keeping up with the times. I even remember the skepticism of an app that would allow you to take a ride in someone else's car. I have to admit that I was skeptical too. But now how many of us would, for many reasons, rather get an Uber than a taxi? Or the bookstore, I remember going to B. Dalton or Borden Books, and even stores like Tours R Us fell to companies like Amazon, who in many ways were the way that folks did things in these new times, they did it online convenient, and now you can even shop on your phone, which I remember 20 years ago when my uncle used to say, when we knew, the news would say, one day you're going to be able to use the internet on your phone. And we thought it was the most craziest thing in the whole world that you'd be able to pick up your phone and to use the internet. But now we are in these new and exciting times that some people have still refused to keep on to. We're living in times where even the church has recognized that there is a need to change to meet these new times. But it wasn't until the current pandemic that churches were forced to. 
20 years ago, I know that some of y'all have been here for a while, but remember these famous sermons these young preachers used to do. I know I look a lot younger than I seem, but trust me, I've been around for a little while now. 20 years ago, there were these sermons that were going around from these young preachers that, that it was called the Joshua generation. There were all these revivals, and every time you got a young preacher in, they were talking about this Joshua generation. Those sermons, the younger preachers would talk about how, like Joshua, ushered in a new generation of folks to the land of milk and honey, that the church needs to operate in the same way. It was also then that we saw a rise in the casual first, fourth Sundays, also called Youth Sunday. Devotion was sometimes that these churches switched to praise and worship. More churches started doing praise dances. Friday night live services were happening where the youth could rap and express themselves and worship in ways that they found relevant. But these Joshua age generational, these Joshua age changes were not enough to keep our young folk in church. If only one Sunday a month is geared towards the youth and they feel that why come on the other Sundays? And if discussions, if they would come, why, if if these discussions that they would have were only happening on the Friday Night Lives or in the Vacation Bible School or on the fourth Sunday, then what is my purpose as a young person in the church? A changing of the times. Yet COVID-19 has pushed many of our churches to forcing, to facing this new generation of ideas and ways of doing things that we may have never thought of before. While in the Midwest and East Coast, churches sometimes are canceled due to weather, it has never been to the point that it is now where we're using technology. Some churches are not even using Zoom, but doing conference calls for worship, a changing of the times. We're living in new times. When I met Pastor Wyatt some time back, he often would tell me how he encouraged other pastors to establish online giving, and many did not. But now churches are forced to move in a way, even within our giving a changing of the times however this is the new way of the future even before COVID most people do not carry cash we are living in different and strange times in the first chapter of Chronicles verse 12 and 32 we see an interesting example of these new times in the days of Israel's monarchy circumstances were changing as David was about to be crowned the king of Israel. Saul was dead and the Benjamites and others had ideas about who would take the throne. But the other tribes were in favor of David as their king. And they had met in Hebron to turn the kingdom over to Saul to him. It was a tense time in Israel and there was a need for great wisdom and better understanding of those times. At that point, 200 leaders in the tribe of Issachar are highlighted as men who understood what was happening and they knew exactly what to do. They knew how to adjust with the times. Our churches have probably forever changed. Church by video call, giving tithes and offerings electronically rather than check. The state even has the nerve, when I talked to Pastor Wyatt a few weeks ago when this came about, to tell us that we should not sing or shout in the church, a changing of the times, or an attack of the church in the changing of these times. Condensing our all-day services to one service. And I actually, maybe I'm just an old man, I miss being in church from early in the morning until later in the evening. A changing of the times, not being able to to sit with one another, with not being able to have potluck, sitting with your own family, and even my family wasn't even able to get the right hand of fellowship. When this is over with, we still want our right hand of fellowship. We got the right wave of fellowship, the changing of the times. These trying times have forced us to reconsider what is necessary in our churches And many things that for many times we've realized what is really not necessary, but something as a result of tradition, but has yielded no results. A changing of the times. I'm going to give you my three points and I'm going to take my seat. And so there's a famous song that was made famous by this man named Willie Nelson called The Gambler. 
And in this song, there's a few songs that actually change. With, there's some songs that are relevant no matter when the times change. And this is actually one that actually sticks with us no matter what the time is. So point one is you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to hold them. Don't act like some of y'all want, but, uh, Pastor, why are you were just in Reno? We not go, don't act like you don't know changing of the times. I'm going to check his Facebook feed when I get home and see what kind of post. <laughs> changing of the times. Well, there's a good time in our lives, in our churches, to hold on to some things that are important to us. We hold on to the fact that we know that Jesus was di died and was resurrected on the third day. We know that we have to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. We know that at a minimum we should be giving a tenth of what God has given to us, if not more. There are things that we know that we should hold on to. However, it is easy to become stuck in some other ways that often happen in the church and trust only in things that have worked in the past. You just assume that the way God has moved before is the same way he'll continue to move today and tomorrow. We assume that since God does not change, and that's the argument that many times at these church business meetings that I always cringe and feel uncomfortable going with because people will say, well, God never changes. And that is true. God never changes. His methods don't change either. That's what people will say. It is true that God does not change. However, the way he responds to each generation does change based on, the, I'm going to read that again, just in case people for the folks in the back that missed that. So, however, the way he responds to each generation does change because of the needs of each generation is different. A changing of the times. You have to know when to fold them. You have to know when to fold them. We need leadership across all of our churches, like Pastor Wyatt, who is able to understand that there is a time to throw in the towel for certain things that probably never work. Today, in this COVID pandemic world, we have an opportunity to re-examine how we've been doing church and to determine ways to reach those who we would have never reached before opportunities to allow people to no longer make excuses in their giving. Let me say that again for the folks in TV land. Opportunities for folks to no longer make excuses in their giving. What does it mean to do church is not even what it meant to do church five years ago and let alone in today's day and times five months ago. A changing of the times. Each generation needs leaders who can understand these times and know what to do in light of them. So that needs to be our prayer in our generation. Lord, help us to understand the times and know what to do. It's interesting that I knew Pastor Wyatt had been doing the, video, the um, Facebook Live prior to this being convenient to everyone else. We have a pastor here that, has, uh, that already was that leadership of changing of the times. These leaders can perceive the real needs of people. They can understand what the Lord is saying and what needs to be done. They knew how we can apply the truth in the word of the God and word in the word of God and be effective with spreading the gospel to the needs of the lost in the time of crisis. And church, I will say we are in a time of crisis and we need to figure out the best way if people are in crisis and there are some people we're forgetting will say that this oh this is a time where you can spend more time with family but if you have no family and you live alone then you are you are even more depressed than you may have been six months ago some of us are only interaction with people we're going to work or going out to the store and there are people at home who are watching us that do not have anything this is an opportunity for the church to reach out to those folk in these changing times And lastly, you need to know when to walk away. You need to know when to walk away. It is not a question of knowing biblical doctrines and teachings. 
the basic lessons of the Bible. Rather, it is the ability to understand the spiritual gift of knowing how to apply whatever the truth is that God is giving in the world now as the days continue to change and unfold. Such as the group of men from the tribe of Issachar who had the understanding and knew where the tides were moving culturally, socially, and spiritually. Culturally, socially, and spiritually. They understood the thinking in that particular society and were willing to change with the times. How many times have we been in those business meetings and someone said, but we've always done it that way. And even when you're trying to change it, there's someone who's saying, well, we shouldn't change it because we've been doing it that way for 40 years, but it hasn't yielded the results that we have been wanting a changing with the times. The men of Issachar knew what God was doing, and they knew how to respond, and also they had a plan. We can understand that even when things change, we need to also not just recognize the change, but be willing to act on that change. In this code, we have an opportunity as the body of Christ today for us to Recognize, just like Joseph said that in, in Genesis 50, God meant COVID came about. And in Genesis 50, Joseph said, you meant to harm me. He was saying to his brother, but God meant it for good. If we were to look at this opportunity and say that COVID meant to harm us. And even when we see what the government is saying, I know this is on Facebook, I hope it's not recorded, but we know that the thing is that the governor's office is even trying to stop us from worshiping, saying that you shouldn't have worship. First, you shouldn't have 100 people. Then you shouldn't have 20 people. Then it should be 10 people. Then it should be no one. And then when they allow us to come back, well, don't sing or don't shout. And the question is, do these folk go to church and know what it means to worship and praise the Lord? The reality is that you meant to harm us, but God meant it for good. This is an opportunity, the first time in our lives that we've seen an opportunity for the church to finally do things differently. And I'm so blessed that God has ushered us into a church that I knew that Pastor Wyatt's vision had already been moving in this direction. And it didn't take some COVID world to make these changes that are going on. And I'm so thankful and blessed for that, a changing of the times. Many people respond to change in a negative way. A reporter once approached a 100-year-old man in a small town in Maine and said, boy, I bet you've seen a lot of changes in this town over the years. The old man replied and said, somehow, just like some people in our business meetings, and said, yes, and I've been against every one of them. There's an old saying also that goes, the only person that likes change is a baby in a wet diaper. I do love that God has brought me and my family to a church from what I have witnessed embraces these changing times. While so many churches are like a scratch CD that no matter how many times you play the song, it keeps repeating the same thing over and over again because the scratch has made it impossible to move forward. Sometimes people purposely come to church to be the scratch because it's the way mama did it and that's the way that the old pastor did it. But some churches say we used to have church full each week and wonder why the back door is open just as much as the front door, a changing of the times. It appears that Mount Calvary has this understanding that even though the church has been around for 60 years, this church is not stuck in the way it was done 60 years ago. It's a church that embraces praise dancing, a church that can sing down the cross, down where the cross where my savior died and still in addition sing a more upbeat song by Kirk Franklin. A church I just found out last week that has workout classes that were canceled. Once again, COVID's trying to stop us in our progress. A church that's okay with knowing no matter what one's situation in life, while we may know one's lifestyle may not be conducive to God, we still know that they are a blessing, that God, that they can be a blessing to them. I don't know about y'all, but I actually miss, and I actually have to ask Pastor White after church, what happened to the food that was going we ran out of oatmeal yesterday, and I was wondering, we hadn't bought oatmeal in about four months, and I'm wondering where in the world, maybe y'all might be ashamed to pick up some. But please be ashamed of picking up some, because there's some oatmeal and some of those diet Dr. Peppers that I want. I'm hoping that 
a changing of the times. Where folks used to be ashamed to get something, maybe they still are, we ain't, but folks used to be ashamed of getting something. We have to recognize that we need to meet people in their needs now. In 1 Corinthians 12, 32, we see a people that are able to interpret God's written word by recognizing the significance of past events and applying those lessons to the present future. Here at Mount Calvary, this is being done and how the church looks at time. I'm almost done, y'all. The world teaches us so many examples about not being stuck in time, but so many churches remain frozen like a Disney movie. They remain stuck like dial-up internet. They allow their progress to be slowed down like a fat man running in a marathon. They want to treat God like he is AAA, whom they only call when their life is in danger or like their car is stuck on the side of the road. But I'm so glad that I now attend a church that's not stuck and loves to embrace these changing times and didn't need no pandemic to get on board. We have learned in life that time itself is this mechanism that can be even considered socially constructed, but this, being this as it may, should not stop us from recognizing that time is something that passes us by and recognizing that times do change. And with the changing of the times, so do we need to recognize and also move with those changes. In pop culture, we see the same examples. Just like so many run back to Jesus, like the Rolling Stones said, the woman who left would come back in time. Or Morris Day in the time so many times taught us about doing the bird and the jerk. And Marty McFly and Doc understood it all best when they had the song go back in time. The world is flooded with stories about the changing of the times. In Ecclesiastes 3, we learn that there is a time for everything. In 2 Peter 3 and 8, we learn that for God, time is much longer since a thousand days in God's eyes is like a one day to us. A one day to God is a thousand, one day to us is a thousand days to God. It took time for God to create the heavens and earth. It took him seven Days. It took time for Jesus to die on the cross and for him to stay in the grave and to be raised on the third day time. But I am so glad that here at Mount Calvary that we recognize that going to church is not the same as being the church. These same four walls that keep people outside can also can keep people inside, can also keep them out. Too many people believe or are being taught that missionary travel is only to foreign lands. We have so many people needing a need here right here, right now. They equate their Christian walk with church attendance or how many people go to their church. The lost or unchurched easily notice this hypocrisy. Yet here at Mount Calvary, I notice that his body embraces all, welcomes all, reaches all, teaches all, feeds all, because the same God that met all of this church's needs 60 years ago is still meeting them today. The same God that knows what he may have needed yesterday is not what we may need today. Knows that what we needed then may or may not be what we needed now. I'm so glad that there was a time... I'm so glad that there was a time that my Jesus also died. I'm so glad that in that 9 o'clock hour that my Jesus and my Savior died. And one thing I can say, that he died, but he spent some time in that old rugged grave. And he stayed there all night Friday. He stayed there all night Saturday. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Heaven and earth in his hands. Am I right about it? I'm so glad that I serve a God that can't be wrapped up only in time. I'm so glad that even with the change of times, that God saw fit to put me and my family at a church that moves with the time, like the changing of the seasons. Working under a pastor that recognizes that things do seem to change. So glad that my God died that nine o'clock hour. Stayed there all night Friday. All night Saturday, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power, not just some power, not just a little bit of power, not just power from 60 years ago, but all power, 
heaven and earth in his hands. Am I right about it? God has been good. So good to me, I can't keep it all to myself. I can start off the message saying, guide me, O oh, thy great Jehovah. But in the end can say, victory shall be mine. God has been just that good. Better to me than I've been to myself. And I'll just say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I said, can't nobody do me like the Lord. I said, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I said, he's mine. Well, I said, can't nobody do me like Jesus. 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 Nobody. for the man of God who shared with us the word of God and thank God that even though he's timeless he's still timely and he's always on time hallelujah to the Lamb I said I told you I said he's, he may be he may not come when you want to but he's never late he's never late hallelujah thank you Lord thank you God for the word thank you and maybe just maybe someone here or someone who's online looking at you checking what this dude was talking about listen maybe God had your timing just perfect so you can hear that word you've been wasting time squandering time and not taking advantage of time but this time God has your attention and maybe just maybe he's saying it's high time for you to get out of darkness and come to the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. And the only way to do that is to accept Jesus as your Savior. The Word of God in Romans 10, chapter 9 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And see, the good thing is, uh, uh, the Bible, matter of fact, the Bible says it like this, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. What that says to me, that's good news because it says that every, every knee shall bow, but that's bad news for others because there are some people who refuse to confess on this side. But oh, when eternity hits, you're going to bow and you're going to confess. You either confess on this side or you're going to confess on the other side. The only problem is with waiting to confess on the other side is that it will be too late in terms of where you're going to spend eternity. And brother and sister, listen, hell is too hot and eternity is too long. I do not want to be spending no eternity in hell. I'm, and just the sound of hell don't sound right. Don't heaven sound, doesn't, doesn't heaven have a better ring to it? Being in the presence of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And maybe, just maybe, God is saying right now is your time to say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are here or if you are gathered around a phone or computer or your television, you need to fall on your face. You need to bow down and say, Lord, if this is real, please come into my life and save me. The Bible says confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. That means you got to say something. It says believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That means you got to believe something. And the scripture says when you do, you shall be saved. Not might be. Not there's a possibility. It says, you shall be saved. And if you want to receive salvation, man, this world is sinking. This world is sinking. But I'm so glad that I serve the risen Savior. Hallelujah. And if you want to be saved,
pray and ask the Lord to come into your life and save you. If you need a church home, if you need a church home, if you need a church home, please, please do me a favor. Send me a message. Send me an email, a phone, or something. Get in touch with me. And I promise you, if you give me some information, I will do my best to help you connect with the church. You may not be in Sacramento. You may be in another city, another state. You may be on the other side of the country. That's a good thing about internet. It just kind of it just kind of keeps us in touch. And uh, I know if I have friends and colleagues in different states in this country, and maybe just maybe, God has put us together at this time so that I can try to get you connected with a church in the community where you live. Please drop us a line. Please let us know. And we will do all that we can to connect you with a good Bible-believing Christian church. God is able. And everybody needs a church home. I don't care what anybody says. Brother, when you're in trouble, you need a refuge. When you're in trouble, you need a refuge. Some of y'all, y'all been in trouble and you've been trying to handle it all on your own. There's a song that came out, um, He's Still Able. And he is. And he is. And he's still able. And even in this time, the Lord is still able. Everybody in here who's believed in Jesus Christ, would you please raise your head high? Raise it high. Raise it high. All right, you can be done. Everybody who have a church home, <laughs> say that. Raise it high. Raise it high. Put it down. This is the last part of this prayer. I was kind of, you know, my son comes in, he's getting the dreads and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, man, you know. But then I was thinking about that at the reverend's preaching. Back in my day, man, I had a jerry curl. <laughs> I had, I mean, it, doc, it was it was kicking to it was down. It was down below my sh up down my neck, and I was you know. And when I preach, I could do like that. It just moved. It just moved like that. Yeah. And then and then y'all y'all remember that movie uh, uh, Coming to America on that scene when when yeah when so glow yeah they. The family got up and all that juice was all on the couch. That, that was me on the car and all my suits and all that stuff. Now, that was back then. What would you think if on next Sunday I came in with a Jerry curl? <laughs> Bill, Bill Jackson would be like, Pastor, you didn't listen to the message last Sunday. Do you remember that scene on I'm Gonna Get You Sucker when uh, Huggy Bear, when he, got, he came out of jail? He, he came out of jail dressed in the stuff that he probably got, was, had him when he was arrested with the big hat and the yellow suit and the big old shoes with the fish tank in there. And everybody was looking at him laughing because he got stuck. Stuck back in that time. And maybe, just maybe, you might be stuck. And, and not necessarily church stuff but maybe personally in your life you're stuck you're like I'm still in the same thing I was in 15 years ago and I need God to help me to move to get up from where I am so that I can be in his perfect will that speaks of you. I'm not even going to ask you to stand. I'm just going to ask you to bow your head. Some of you are stuck educationally. You're like, I don't want to go back to school because I can't. Why not? Right now, you don't even have to go home. You don't have to leave, leave home and go to school. They, they'll bring school right to your house. You don't have to pay no gas. 
God, in Jesus' name, thank you for the message. Thank you for the messenger. Thank you for um, encouraging us to realize that times are changing, styles are changing. Thank God that, 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 that your word says, you, uh, your word teaches that you're immutable. You don't change. And at the same time, we do know that even though the styles don't, the styles change. Your standards never do. And so, God, some of us, we may be stuck in the 70s and 80s and 90s, but we're in the 21st century, and, we're move, and time is moving forward. Help us to wake up and to say, I can go ahead and get rid of the curl, that I can go ahead and take all my leisure suits and Take them to the goodwill. Help us to understand that I can go ahead and progress in this life and not be stuck where I am. There's some things that you said that we ought to always do. We ought to always pray. We ought to always worship and all of those things. And then, God, while we are in this society, we ask that you would help us to know when to hold them, Know when to fold them and know when to walk away. So, God, thank you now. Thank you, God. Help us. We need you. In Jesus' name. And everyone in agreement said amen. Come on, let's give God another hand of praise. God. Uh, Reverend Cormier, I got I got I got I got an uh, get honest confession. All this online stuff, um, uh, it really wasn't me. It was me, but not me. It was kind of like the mini me. <laughs> Rev. Wyatt, uh, Brian K. Wyatt. Dad, we need to, we need to. Uh, thank God, thank God, thank God. And then thank God that, that, that um, we try to move forward. We have never, there's some things we try to move back to also. If my people which are called by my name shall lumber themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then we hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and heal the land. We're trying to pray, though. We're trying to get that part right. Yeah, there's some things I ain't going to change. I ain't going to stop praying, y'all. And the way things are going, you better not stop praying either. I'm serious. Hallelujah. You need God. We need God. I was listening to a lesson on yesterday of, um, uh, based on that scripture pastor scripture do his teaching he said he said the interesting thing is God is in heaven and God does not engage or involve themselves in the affairs of earth unless we ask them to and you won't pray you trying to change your situation and it's not changing and it's not working but you won't talk to the one who has all power. And I believe God be just up there looking over, over the banners of heaven just going, oh gosh. I'm right here. I'm right here. Word of God was preached. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Hallelujah. It's now time for us to give the Lord's tithe and offering. Amen. I was checking out this TV tablet. <laughs> Amen. To God be the praise for all that He has done, is doing, and will continue to do. If you're giving online, um, I believe that the um, it's showing on the screen on how you can give through Givelify. Uh, you can give through PayPal. You can give through Square. You can give through Cash App. By looking up uh, Mount Calvary or MC, dollar sign, MC, MBC, and um, that will link you to the way you can share and give an offering, time and offering. Um, thank you for those who still believe in snail mail. Some of us, we still, amen, and uh, we don't mind going to the post office box and getting it out of the mail. Um, Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, P.O. Box 13667. Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, P.O. Box 13667. 
Sacramento, California, 95853. Zip code 95853. And I believe it's showing on the screen there as well. So we ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly. Mount Calvary, those of you who are um, at home, I want to thank you all because you all still support the ministry and you still support and give to your pastor. And I want to let you know that I thank you and I really appreciate and appreciate you. To God be the praise. Now I'm going to say something. I'm online and I need y'all to hear this real good. Those of you who have your mask on, amen. If you need, if you feel it kind of dizzy, you need to go outside, pull it down and breathe some fresh air. Because your body is not made to breathe carbon dioxide. Okay, you you can suffocate literally. Make sure that when you have it on, when you're not around people, you get up, take that thing down so you can breathe some fresh air. All right? Amen. To God be the praise. And sometimes when I go to them places and, and ain't nobody around me, I have it on, I just kind of put it down so I can get some good air. Amen. So I, ain't, I ain't playing. How about that, Sister Walton? <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This is another thing I just found out. Huh? <laughs> oh my goodness. Amen. And then uh, I need to say this real quick as an observation. I, um, I do need an envelope if you could please help me. Thank you. Um, those of you who have packs of and things of hand sanitizer, please understand hand sanitizer is not made for you to use 50 times a day. No, no, no. It's very, it's very, very serious. I've been using it. I mean, so it's like I'll go out to eat and I'll be able to use hand sanitizer about eight times before I finish eating because I touch the ketchup, then the hand sanitizer. I, you know, you know, I'm trying to trying to do all that stuff. But then I was looking at my fingers, man, and my fingerprints are going down. No, I'm I'm very, very serious. And so there's this been a study out they say that you use it when you have to. Use soap and water as much as you can. Use soap and water as much as when you have to use it, I understand. But use soap and water as much as you can. I went to a, a antique store while I was in Reno, an antique store while I was in Reno. And they didn't have a, <laughs> they didn't have a, a hand sanitizer station outside. They had a station outside that said, before you come in, go over there, wash your hands with soap and water. I was like, whoa. Interesting. Interesting. So anyway, anyway. And also, those of you who like to give, have a debit card to give, a credit card, you can see uh, Brian K. Wyatt uh, with the, should have got a curl when I got the dreads. Um, and he can go ahead and take, take, take the note. Amen. To God be the praise. Is everyone ready to give? Okay, I'm not. I'm sorry. Let's, let's lift our gifts to the Lord now. God, we thank you and we bless you for your presence, your protection, your provision. Thank you for keeping us and watching over us. Now we come to give back to you a portion of what you've blessed us with through tithe and offering. We're praying for the gifts and the givers according to your word. And we're believing, God, that all of our needs, the needs of this minister, the needs of this ministry, the needs of every member will be sufficiently met because we have honored you and obeyed you in terms of giving. So thank you, God, in advance. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said amen. Oh, we're going to be in the hands of the, in the direction of the ushers.
celebration announcements. Um, on this, starting this Thursday and for the next three Thursdays during Bible study, we'll be having a special uh, lecture session dealing with prayer. Dealing with prayer. We want everyone, those of you, who, even if you're a part of the Wednesday noon Bible study, if you would also please, if you have the time to please, uh, be a part of the Thursday Bible study, uh, Zoom Bible study. Um, our own um, Sister Bertina Wyatt will be teaching on prayer. <laughs> Sister Bertina, what's the actual lesson? What's the actual lesson? When we pray. And, um, and uh, so please, please uh, uh, be a part, be a part of that for the next three Sundays before we go into the next phase of our Bible study. And so it's going to be on Zoom, and we'll make sure that uh, the information is made available so everyone who can will be a part of um, that Bible study. To God be the praise. Let's pray now. God, we thank you and bless you for the gifts, blessed gifts and givers. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. Amen. You got daddy? Oh, you right? Come on, man. This girl is heavy. Just a couple of quick uh, observations. There's a card that we had uh, failed to mention on last Sunday. Uh, we're so grateful for you. God made our paths cross. He blessed me in so many ways. In my prayers and in my heart, I am always so grateful for you, Mount Calvary, and the difference you make in my life. Thank you. This is from the Anderson, Sandridge, Campbell, and Fuller families when they had the uh, services here for Sister Sandridge. And so Again, this is from the um, Full of Sandridge Anderson Campbell family. And again, God bless. Um, also, guess what? That's all I got. That's all I got. Huh? Oh, yeah, we're going we gonna to do that. Oh, we got that. We got that. Yeah, we got that. We got that. So, uh, again, God bless and God be the praise. As is our, um, as our, our custom, um, this, this, doc, this, is we ain't gonna change on this one, um, and uh, and so the men the man of God preached, and the Word of God says when the man of God shares with us spiritual things, we ought to share with him carnal things, and um, I don't know if any any of y'all brought a couple of uh, buckets of uh, oatmeal, um, or <laughs> some chicken, uh, a couple of chickens. Um, uh, uh, Glenn, I know you catch some fish. Did you bring some fish with you? So you can't give him no fish, right? But but what we can do is we can be a blessing to him. Uh, and oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm gonna tell y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all because part of my vacation was I went. Me and Sister Wyatt went to a Clear Lake, and so I went fishing. I, no, I went. I didn't go fishing. What I did is I bought a, a fishing pole and some stuff, and then I I wet my lines. That's what I did. And then when I got huh huh. Yeah, baby steps. I caught a little. I caught a catfish, a couple little perch, and then, so then that evening, uh, my my nephew called me. Uh, Glenn called me. Hey, hunk, hunk, we 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 gonna have a boat out there. We come, man. I'm going. I'm going. I'm like, Paulo. I like, baby. I I told you I want to go fishing. So I went on. God, I understand now why professional fishermen are professional fishermen. I was the designated fish netter. <laughs> The first cast, the first cast with a with a crappie lure, this dude snags about a 15-pound catfish. And he got it in, and I got the video of it. I'm like, and boy, they was bringing in them big old bad. I mean, that, I mean, like, man, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I call, I call, yeah, I did, I, I hung one, caught a big old bass, and, and, Looked at me and said, "Nope." And then threw the threw the lure out and took off. I missed it. And then and then he hung another one. And then he gonna give me the pole and like catch it, catch it. I, Man, don't make me make make me lose the fish. No, I'll catch it. He handed me the reel. I reeled it one time and the fish jumped off. I'm like, so I was the professional fish netter. That's what I was. 
Anyway, okay, so anyway, I'm sorry. I'm just going on rambling, y'all. Sorry, y'all online. That's just how we are. We family. We get together, and we just enjoy being together. Uh, you ought to come out and check us out sometime. Listen, what we want to do is we want to be a blessing to the man of God who preached on today. Amen. To those of you, if you're willing and you can, please come on and be a blessing. If you have a financial cash blessing, if you want to give via debit card, please see uh, Reverend Wyatt, and they're going to make sure that they get everything and get it to him. Um, do you have a cash app? It's probably probably your name. I don't, it, it, I don't know about my it's, it's dollar sign Comier C J. Dollar sign C O R M I E R C J. That's his cash app. You got it? One more time. Dollar sign C O R M I E R C J. Okay? And if you missed that, um, Get, yeah, give it. Go, go to Mount Calvary and do it through PayPal or Givelify. We'll make sure it gets to it gets them. But those of you, if you're here and you want to come and bring an offering, uh, you can just put it in the bucket. Um, or if you're going to use your debit card, you can go to the side and do it there. Right. Thank you all. Thank you. Lil Gorman, you got a job. Go on, dude. He's like, yeah, I got a job. <laughs> hey, man. God bless. Hey, man. why you weren't moving, huh? He was like, y'all better come get my hand. <laughs> Those of you who are, are watching us, please pray for us because we still don't know how to act. We just miss each other. and everything. Does anybody else have any, anything else they're going to give here? Those of you online, again, you can give uh, via the website to be a blessing to the preacher. Just mark on there uh, for the speaker, and we'll make sure that it gets to him. Again, God bless. Thank you, God, for the gifts. Bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Please hydrate. It's hot out there. Please make sure you take your mask off when you get outside and breathe. Amen. Now, if you get too close to somebody, I understand, but, you know, based, you know what they say. Okay? All right. All right. All right. To God be the praise. That's being on. Let's stand together. Oh, wait a minute. Have a seat. Have a seat. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I got to do this, y'all. Mildred Jackson, quit looking at me. I see you looking at me through that mask. I got it. I got to do this. On Friday evening, Sister Bertina Wyatt um, had her listening CD release slash book release party. I went there, man. It was, it was balloons. Well, it was one balloon. <laughs> and it was a crowd of people online. And it was her and Brian and just the family. But she shared and a lot of people. And so she has copies of the book, which is called He is Able. He's still able. Oh, man. And uh, she has a copy of the book, and she has a copy of her single. What, how, what's, what's, what's the cost for the book and the CD? Together is $15. And if it's separate, it's just, as she said, it's, it's together. You got to do it together. So a single, $15 for the book as well as the CD. And those of you who can, please support it. If you can't afford it and you want it, let me know. And um, I'm going to talk to uh, Brother Glenn, see if he'll let me borrow the money. Uh, but we do we want everyone who can to please get it. I did say borrow. Well, that means I'm going to pay it back to you. I mean that. Amen. So, again, so after service, please go and, and see her. 
Uh, do you want to set up in the dining room, Bertina? You want to set up in the dining room? Okay. You go now? Okay, why don't you stay in there? Oh, yes. And you can also go to her website. Thank you. Her website is www.bertinawyatt.com or .org? Dot com. www.brittinawyatt dot com. Bertinawyatt dot com. You can go to the website and you can get uh, put your order in as well. God be the praise. God bless you. Amen. Y'all ready? I am too. Let's stand. Yes. Huh? We we gonna give it to him, but we gonna give it to him. <laughs> We go, we go give it to him. We go give it to him. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be observant to the rules and stuff. And he gonna make me put them down there, and we gonna fellowship me and, and all that stuff. But I'm still trying to, I'm trying to adhere to some of the mandates and all that kind of stuff. So we will. I promise y'all, we will. Mm -hmm. Then after that, he gonna have like four bottles of sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let's 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 pray. Help us, God, to realize that though your word doesn't change, though you're immutable, styles change, times are changing. Help us to, to, to remember that and be able to adjust and to adapt. Bless us as we go from this place. Keep us by your power. We're praying for all of our young people. This is the second Sunday, and this is usually the Sunday when our young people will be here and all of our young people singing in the choir and serving on the ushers and other parts of the ministry, God. But I'm praying for them, God, and I'm praying for us. Avante and Amari and Avarie and Peyton and Ryan and uh, Flemmy Jr. and Jalen and Jordan. Bailey and and Rainey's two uh, the kids that she keeps and God I don't forgot name Mocha and Andrew and Matthew and Julie and who Julian and Chelsea thank you and Julie and who Amani and and all of the all of our young people God I pray your blessings up on them and I'm looking forward to the day when we can look back and see. Our young people back in the choir stand singing and serving. Yeah. We're praying for all of our seniors, those who can't come to church because of pre-existing conditions or those who are shut in. Praying for them, keep them by your power. Thank you for those who have come to share. Pray your blessings as we go through this week. God, we know that the, the report that the government and the, the, uh, the nation is giving, God, is bleak. But God, we thank you that we are part of another kingdom. And we thank you that we're a part of your royal family. And God, thank you for the added protection that you give us because we're in your family. And so God, I'm praying that you would touch churches and believers and preachers who are still trying to cope and trying to stand on the wall. God, please touch in Jesus' name. Bind us closer together. Thank you, Lord. Keep us in Jesus' name. Let us have a good week. Thank you, Lord. Please repeat after me. And now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us unto him be glory unto him be glory unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end and God before we go we're praying for um, brother Wilson God we ask you to touch him we're praying for Raymond Poole, Kim's husband, who had surgery this past week. We thank you for him coming through. God, we pray that you will continue to bless and strengthen his body. Touch now in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. Give, every, give, give, give everybody an a air hug and, you know, and wave and all that kind of stuff. Huh?